Yes, it's a, a Beastie Boys t-shirt, currently my favourite t-shirt. Now, today I'm going to be talking about the track Play For Today by The Cure. Now, some of you might have seen that reasonably recently I did a video on A Forest and subsequently got quite a lot of requests that I look at more Cure stuff. And I'm always happy to oblige. I love to get requests, always listen to the tracks that are requested. And if I like them, I add them to my quite large list of possible future videos. Now, this track seemed to crop up quite a lot. It's a great track, some really inventive, interesting guitar stuff going on. So I'm gonna take you through how to play it in some detail, but let me start by having a playthrough. <laughs> play this track up until a couple of days ago but I sat down figured it out and really had quite a lot of fun learning how to play it so I hope you're going to enjoy this too let's get to it the introduction then and we've got a lovely part here played all with natural harmonics and we're playing them at the 12th fret the 7th fret and the 5th fret so we're starting off at the 12th fret just going from the G to the B strings and then over onto the top string then we're going to the 7th fret and we're descending and then the 5th fret but ascending and then back up to the 12th fret again and then we're going a bit lower down to the D string and then the next few bars we're again going up at the 12th fret and then the 7th down 5th fret and then the 7th and then we're finishing off up at the 12th fret and if you're new to natural harmonics a few tips here you want to make sure that your fretting finger is right over the fret wire and you're just pressing lightly and then releasing pressure as soon as you hear the harmonic I also think it helps to pick fairly firmly and maybe to pick fairly close to the bridge that just seems to help the harmonics pop out which can sometimes be a bit tricky particularly when you've got a very clean sound so if I put all of that together I'll play this for you in time we've got one two three four Next we have kind of a transition section, it's like a build before we get to the main riff. <laughs> This is 
is based off of a fifth string root power chord shape and in fact most of the guitar parts in this song are based around this simple power chord shape we're moving that up and down the neck and we're also sometimes embellishing that slightly by allowing the open two top strings to ring out and sometimes we're playing some extra notes on the B string as well but this little build section we're at the fourth fret here it's like a C sharp 5 power chord and we're just picking out some notes individually from that chord and then just strumming that chord upwards letting some of those open strings ring as well particularly the B string and then moving that power chord down to a C5 and just building that all downstroke eighth notes sometimes you're picking individual notes sometimes you're strumming the chord I don't think it matters particularly what pattern you're playing there but listening to the recording and you should get a feel for what's going on so all of that put together sounds like this <laughs> Moving on to the main riff then, and this is really made up of three chord shapes. We've got a B minor, then we've got an A sus2, and an A7. And the B minor is played as a bar chord at the second fret, and the A7 and the A sus2 are played as open chords. The fingering, I think, is important here, and when I first figured out this riff, I was fingering it slightly differently, but then I watched some live footage, and uh, Robert Smith seems to play it like this, so plays the bar chord as you normally would and then for the A sus2 and the A7 you're playing those two chords with your third and fourth fingers which um, initially for me at least feels a little bit awkward but ultimately I think this makes the riff a lot smoother so uh, you can think of it like this if you're coming from the B minor bar chord then you're keeping your third and fourth fingers down just moving them two frets lower and you're in position for the A sus2. So starting with the B minor then, we've got a steady eighth notes all down stroke kind of a feel. Sometimes we're just hitting the bass notes, sometimes we're bringing out the other notes in the chord, and the riff starts like this. So I can see we've got a little lift up of the second finger there, just to allow the open B string to ring. And then we're moving down to the A sus2 and we're pushing into it. So we're changing on the and of four. It's one and two and three and four and. And then we've got this business with the little finger. So we've got the A sus2 moving your little finger over to the B string and you've got an A7. And then lifting up the little finger to allow the open B to ring and then back to the A sus2. So. And we play that three times. And then we're going to a G chord, and this is a bar chord at the third fret. This time it's a six string root G. Mostly you're just playing the low E string, but sometimes you're playing the other notes in the chord just to create some accents. So we've got one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One further thing that's worth mentioning is sometimes you can hear Robert Smith throwing in some quick down up downs of the pick and that serves to just break up the relentless eighth notes a little bit and that's particularly effective when you're moving to a new chord so um riff is really just a simplified version of the main riff we've got none of those embellishments in there so we're just going from B minor to A sus2 
we have the bridge and we're back to these fifth string root power chord shapes and we've got a bar of C sharp and then a bar just moving up one fret to D again all eighth note down strokes and we're pushing into the D chord so the essential part is this and you can start to hear some of these embellishments here so the first thing you can hear is sometimes the open B and the high E string coming through and also interestingly we're hearing some little embellishments played on the B string and just watching some live footage and seeing how Robert Smith does it he's got this slightly unusual technique whereby he frets the power chord and then squeezes back his second finger um, to catch the notes on the B string so if, if we're playing this uh, this D chord here you're stretching your second finger back to the fifth fret on the B string to add in that extra note there and then on the C sharp you're similarly adding in some of these embellishments on the, the C sharp you're you're playing the E note to create a C sharp minor chord so what, what that sounds like is this we've got um going back and forth between those two chords and then coming out of this section we've got the C sharp for two bars then moving down one fret to C the entire bridge section then sounds a bit like this Okay, what else have we got? There's a little instrumental section which comes towards the end of the song and once again it's all based on these fifth string root power chord shapes but with more of these slightly unusual embellishments played on the B string. So that the basic idea is that we're going from an E5 power chord down to a D5 power chord. So. pushing into the, the D power chord but again we're bringing our second finger back to play some of these extra notes on the B string so you get this kind of thing and doing the same thing on, on the D chord there it's a bit of a stretch I suppose you could just play this as a normal bar chord there but it doesn't quite sound the same if you do it that way so and if you listen you can hear some slightly different variations um, that are happening as well so so maybe you can hear the F sharp in there your second finger up and down there so you've got a sus to to a minor sound and then we're moving down to the C sharp and we've got this a little ascending top line melody so you've got the power chord D sharp, E and F sharp played with the little finger and then we're coming down to the C power chord and we've got a similar little top line melody that he's bringing out so It's a little bit hard to hear this on the, the studio recording where it's, it's double tracked I think but on, on live recordings he's playing this pair of sixths to, to, to end this section of the song so we've got the fifth fret on the D and the B 
and then moving that two frets higher so <laughs> So if I put that together, we're nearly there now, we've just got some variations you can hear on the main riff again towards the end of the song and you've got something like this. Once you get to this A sus to A7 chord, we've got this little melody played on the B string. So you, know, you need a strong pinky for this, just moving that around. Lastly we've got a nice little outro section and this is based on two chords. We've got this F sharp six string root bar chord but we've got the open B and E strings ringing as well so you're not barring all the way across you're just fretting the root note with your first finger. And from there we're going to this kind of unusual sounding chord. I'm not exactly sure what I would call that it's a kind of E minor I suppose but you've got the got the sixth and the ninth in there as well so it's open low E string and then fret four and four on the A and the D strings open G and then on the B string we're playing the third fret with an open top string and we're playing something like this um, all eight notes but we're accenting certain subdivisions of the beat just by playing the entire chord and once we get to this unusual chord shape here we're just walking up a little melody on the B string so we've got very end of the song we've just got this so I'm just playing the the fourth fret on the D open G and then that same little melody played on the B string so Let's talk gear and there's actually a really interesting article from Sound on Sound magazine which you can read online. It's all about the recording of the track A Forest but it talks more generally about the recording of the album 17 Seconds and it's a really interesting read if you're interested in music production. And as far as the gear that Robert Smith is using on this record it seems he was mostly using a jazz master through a Roland Jazz Chorus amp and you can actually still get Roland Jazz Chorus amps. I'm quite tempted to get one myself like I need another amp. But I kind of do need another amp. Now the gear that I'm using today I've got my Jazzmaster which is a 65 vintage reissue Jazzmaster. Sounded best to me for this track to have the pickup selector in the middle position so we've got the bridge and the neck pickups on together. The amp I'm using today is my Vox AC30 and a couple of effects obviously you need some chorus so I've got my Boss CE2 chorus pedal also got just a touch of compression from an MXR Dynacomp and I think that really helps particularly with those harmonics at the start of the track and just generally with clean sounds I think a bit of compression can be nice. That's it for this video as usual the tab is going to be up on my Patreon page along with the full length backing track which I put together so if you're interested do check those out. Thanks very much for watching I shall see you next time.